Hey what's going on, my name is Quinn and today we're going to make a look at this guy, the Black Mamba OP01. This guy is the knockoff version of the Studio Series 102 Optimus Prime from Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now the original figure is incredibly elusive in the market right now and it's been sculpted into a super high prices which is incredibly difficult. Also it was being sold in the subline of Buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series line so that's why it makes it so expensive and incredibly elusive in the market right now. And Hasbro has stated that they're going to be releasing a mass retail version of this guy sometime in the future, which is amazing to see. But for now, it is incredibly elusive at the time of this recording. So that's why I picked up this guy, the knockoff version. This is supposedly this is from Black Mamba, the legendary Black Mamba, because as of time, as of, as, of, as far as as far as I know, Black Mamba is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. And I don't know what the company this is that make this. It's all the resellers that I saw on YouTube on my on the store that I bought this guy is call, calling it from Black Mamba. So I'm just gonna say that this is a release of Black Mamba OP01. So yeah, that's gonna be a little introduction for you guys about Black Mamba and the, this original figure as a whole. But let's talk about the details of this guy. The detail is fantastic on this guy. All of the me mechanical details have been sculpted really nicely. Hasbro did an amazing job modeling and sculpting on this guy base. This is actually an accurate representation, the transforming version of Optimus Prime from Rise of the Beast. Still the best looking one in my opinion is the Yolo Park one which I don't have. But let's take a look at the detail on the head. It looks nice. It has been painted nicely with the metallic silver that they use and but the, the problem that I have with the head is that the eyes is too small so you could you could barely see the eye but it is noticeable. It is noticeable but it is very very small. It's just a nitpick. Oh, but other than that, it is a solid head sculpt. Down to the chest, looks nice. And they have some Autobot uh, insignia over there, but it is just a painted, doesn't sculpt it real nice. It's because of, you know, copyright issues. But the chest part is nice. And this part is made out of die cast, which is super nice. Makes it had a little bit of heft on the figure. Down to the mechanical little on the, and the feet also as well. It's been painted, sculpted real nicely. All of these metallic silver that you see are painted, which is super nice. And the whole hand also as well, it is super nice, it's sculpted. And there's no nub marks, there's no dirty nub marks all over this figure, it is nice. Down to the back detail, and you can see the weapons, we'll talk about more in a mid in a minute. And it's also sculpted in back detail, just like in the SS38, which I will show you guys in a bit for comparison. It's sculpted really nicely, and Hasbro did an amazing job sculpting this for Studio Series figure. This is by far the best Studio Series mold I have handled so far. Speaking of weapons, let's talk about the weapons of this guy. As you can see, it is stored on the back. You can store it really nicely. Let's talk about the smallest one, which is the gun, which is the cannon over here that we see in the movie. And it is sculpted really nicely. As you can see, it has a very good detail. Let me take a look at it. There we go. It has some intricate detail, which is super nice. Unfortunately, it is not painted, I think, because some views, some some copies that I saw on YouTube has a metallic kind of silver paint all over this guy. Like this is metallic silver, metallic silver, metallic silver all over the body. Even you can look at the box, it has the metallic silver on the on the some part. But this one doesn't. I think this one looks more okay, akin to the uh, original Studio Series figure. But it's not a it's not a it's not a complaint. It's just something that I noticed. We will talk about the paint just in a bit. So all you need to do to get the plug the cannon is to unfold this, and then you can just fold in the hand snap instead and then close it back up and you can plug in the hand as you can see this is the back and you can plug it in and have Optimus Prime wielding his iconic blaster from we see in the Rise of the Beast movie which is super nice I love it it's, it's been designed it's been molded really really nicely it's super good unfortunately it doesn't not, it doesn't look accurate because this part is supposed to be transformed into like we saw in the movie but I don't really not mind about it because some people have complaints about this looks so awkward because it just looks like a truck part with a cannon sticked up right out. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, in my opinion, I'm not really that bothered. I really wanted to hate this. I really want to hate this part. But when I'm, but after some handling this guy for a couple days, I am not mad about this one because in the movie it transformed really massively. It doesn't realistically fit inside of Optimus's hand, so I can see it doesn't work. I can just squint my eyes and imagine that this is how it transformed into. So, is because in the movie it realistically large and realistically large to the cannon to transform out of the arm. So I can I can work with this. And then finally, the last one is the sword, which unlike the cannon, it is painted nicely. So if it is the sword, it is painted in this metallic silver that they use. is super good. Sculpted really nicely also as well. And you can plug it into his hand with this slot over here. 
as you can see, and just slot it in, and there we go. He holds him with time, holding his iconic sword from we see in the Rise of the Beast movie. And all, all these weapons are interchangeable. You can plug into both hands, which is really nice. And I think in terms of accessories, it is pretty solid, even though it's not much. But it is based on, it is a one-to-one -one replica of the original studio figure, so I'm not really that mad about it. Now speaking of the paint that I mentioned before, I got this one is non-metallic, the non-metallic symbol that I got. So from what I understand is that the version that has this kind of paint, the non-metallic symbol like we see in the box, is the fixed version. I want to say fixed because in the original re release of this guy with the, all the metallic silver on it, the joints are super stiff. The joints are super stiff and some people have reported some breakage along the hands and the feet because of how super stiff the figure is. But on my copy with the, with the paint looking like this, all the joints are, there are some stiff parts like the thigh which I will do detail more in, this, in the uh, posability section, but some part like this is not stiff. It is tight, but it's not super loose, so it is not stiff also as well, so it can hold its hand pretty nicely, it is super solid. Nothing is loose on this figure. It is super nice to handle and to pose this guy, so I, I would recommend to take a look at the listing that you guys want to buy this. I'll look, take a look at the review picture and stuff like that. If you get this paint, this type of paint right there, like the original Studio Series, you might get the new batch, because the new batch over here has some, some stiff joints, but not every single joint is super stiff if you know what i mean so yeah if you get the metallic paint like this one like in the box you might get the super stiff joint i could be wrong about that let me know down in the comments if that is in the case but that is from what i intend so far another thing that i want to point out is the hand sometimes so when you fold it in like so it has sometimes a tendency to be stuck so i would recommend use a part separ a parts separator to separate this guy with a piece of plastic or something but the favorite would be nice or if you could just like me, just forcibly push it out like out like that. But I would not recommend it because of risking of breaking the plastic. So yeah, I would recommend get a part separator, preferably plastic, of course, because you don't want to scratch the paint on this guy. Or not. This is a bad example of it, but I'm just gonna use what I have. So just to actually wiggle this out because it is super tight. Because this you need to kind of like sand it down or sand the hand down to be able to do that. But I don't think it's you need that because. You will risk breaking the uh, plastic as well. Well, the plastic is solid. I just don't want to risk breaking the plastic as well. Anyway, let's talk about into the posability of this guy. The head is on a ball joint, so you can look up that far and look down that far. Also, head tilts side to side, which is a really nice range of head movement, unlike the, uh, the SS32 slash SS44. And the shoulder is a bit weird. It's one of those trigger happy shoulders that I uh, have mixed feelings about it. So. It, has, it can do, do full 360 without any hindrance whatsoever, but once it, well, the reason why I do it from the back over here, because if I do it from the front, it, you activate this joint, which is the transformation joint. So what I recommend is that you untap the back piece over here if you want to pose it, and then inch it out, and you can, this is also can move out about that part, and then just rotate it around. So it is a bit fiddly, but it's the one that works the most, or you can just rotate it backwards, such like that. You can do that also as well. We already talked about this guy. And this guy, this part can also move, but that's more for the transformation. And so you have bicep rotation, which is super tight. You have a double jointed bend at the elbow, which is super nice to see on this budget. And you have also on the hand. So the hand can also rotate around and can move in and out just like this. And then the, and then the this is a really good part. So he has an ab crunch because of the transformation. Look at this. It holds its position, it has an ab crunch, of course from the side profile it looks incredibly ugly, but you can make it somewhat work when you're posing this guy, you have some ab crunch, but I'll take it as a point of articulation, which is super nice to have, and also has a waist swivel, which is super tight. And the side skirt can also move out, for a lot of the legs to move out about that far. So, the kick, the, 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 the leg kick, this is a very interesting one. So, because there's no room for Hasbro to put a pin over it, just to put a fold out skirt like that so what they do is that make a drop down hip joint so they put the joint in here instead of the middle so as a joint that bends around the side skirt and has a somewhat it is it not, it's not a somewhat it is a natural kick so look at that so the joint is on over here not on the middle and it does look a natural as you can see and the joint on my copy is stiff on this guy that's why it has a little bit of oil that it, that it has oil out of the box so just to keep in mind and also can move about back that far due to where but the way it's sculpted uh, you cannot move it back that far 
you have a tie rotation which is also super stiff but the skull kind of gets in the way of the posing so you guys can work out with that one you get a bend at the knee which is 90 degrees but in the original figure it is ratcheted you can see some ratchet to cover it over there it's supposed to be ratcheted but on my copy it doesn't i don't know if this applies to every single copy of this knockoff but mine doesn't have any ratchet joints and the ankle can move up down and also has a well joint as you can swivel around and has some ankle pivot and you can play around with the hinge joint and the ball joint to get some even deeper pivot which is super nice in terms of possibility hasbro did an amazing job on this mold and i am so incredibly impressed even though this is a knockoff but i just gotta give credit where credit's due hasbro did an amazing job on this mold and just you need to get this one if you can i'm just i'm just gonna skip it apart i'm just gonna say it right now get this guy if you can for size comparison, here it is along it is BMB OP01 alongside my SSG Gods Marvel Spider-Man. My previous review, the Byway Star Leader version 3, and the Size Star Commander, which is their knockoff of the Studio Series 38. And I gotta give credit where credit is due again. Hasbro did an amazing job improving this guy from the SS38 because the SS38 is a bit messy and all over the place. From the legs to some corner controls on the legs, on the uh, on the chest looks super uh, disproportionate. Unlike the Studio Series 102, it as did an amazing job. Like I pref I now prefer this guy over this guy. But so even though both of these aren't a knockoff, but the original engineering, the design, the molding and stuff like that is from Hasbro. So I gotta give credit to Hasbro for improving upon this mold, for improving upon this mold, and they improved it on this one. And I just love it. I love to see this mold side by side because originally this is gonna be this was my favorite mold this is my favorite mold even though i prefer michael bay's original optimus prime design from, from the first three movies i still prefer in terms of mold prefer this guy until this guy came out the knockoff version i bought the knockoff and i just on times beat this guy and now this is now my favorite mold of in the entire studio series line also speaking of ss38 i'm gonna point out some a little bit of differences about this guy so where, where SS38 kind of broken, which is this part over here. So in the original Hasbro figure, this also, this also exists. So you need to tap into this slot over here. So you need to tap in, you can see. So it, it locks into place. Let me just tap in real quickly. So it's supposed to be locked into place. But when you activate the ankle, it sometimes disengages, which is where Hasbro has fixed it in the SS, SS102. As you can see, it is very, very nice. As you can, it is slotted. It is not gonna, it's not gonna come out anytime soon. It is super solid on my copy at least. And as you can see, it is super solid. It, when you move the ankle, it doesn't want to disengage. So this is what I mentioned about Hasbro improving upon this mold. This is, has some many concept art parts, like the chest part. It is based on a concept art as, as far as I know. The head also as well. I prefer the, the rise of the beast uh, SS-102 head over the SS-38 head. Eight head. It's just super flat. It's a super flat. Looks nothing like how it looks in the movie. Whereas the SS-102 looks a bit more accurate. You can you can just pose it from Bumble from the Bumblebee movie as well if you if you want to. I mean it does work really nice to pose it also as well. So in terms of like co actual comparison to the SS-38 mold, SS-102 takes the cake. I'll do a separate video on step by step how to transform this guy. Transformation on this one is enjoyable. Everything taps in nicely and it has a clear place to go. And you can see where they improved upon the SS38. For those who don't know, SS102 is a heavy retool of SS38. The only resemblance to SS38 would be some part of the legs and some part of the chest. Other than that, this is a completely new figure, which is spectacular considering this was made on a retool budget. The only grab I have with this transformation is the chest, where sometimes the mushroom pack snapped off. I assume this is more of a KO QC problem rather than Hasbro QC problem because on the many reviews I've watched both the OP01 and SS102, this doesn't happen. I must have gotten a bit rough with this guy on the past couple of days handling it, so that's why sometimes the chest slipped off. Other than that though, this transformation is super fun and again, credits to Hasbro for improving upon the SS30A mold. And here we have Black Member OP01 fully transformed up into his Shrock mode and I get it again, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Hasbro did an amazing job at improving this mold. I just love it. The engineering has been improved a lot from the SS38 because this is, if, as far as you get, if you guys didn't know, this is a heavy retool of the SS38, like I mentioned before, and it's just amazing. Of course, the back truck detail over here looks ugly. I know it looks ugly, 
But this is because they ran out of budget, like I said before. And in terms of detail, it's amazing. The bow bar is really, really good. It's sculpted now. It has a separate individual piece. It's unlike in the movie line version, it's not extended like this. It is, I think, this is sculpted real nicely. And you can see some resemblance of Autobot insignia in here, of course, like the movie. Of course, not for the copyright reason. You cannot sculpt an Autobot logo. And to the entire detail in the metallic silver is super nice. Really, really painted also as well. And I do love weapon storage over here. You can snap over here and then put a gun over here. Which is real nice. Of course, it kind of ruins everything, but eh, I'm not really that mad about it. And in terms of transforming this guy, it is super enjoyable. It's just real nice. Just a flick back, flick back, flick back, and transform this guy. However, this guy does not want to tap in. As you can see, there is some of that. There's a slot over here that needs to be tapped into over there. But on my copy, you cannot because of this part over here kind of hindering from tapping in. But I hope that's just my copy issue, not a mess, to, uh, not in the original figure issue also. So because as far as I know, in the original figure, there's no QC problem. And for size comparison, here it is my BMB OP1 truck mount alongside with my SF figure Marvel Spider-Man. By way, Star Leader, which again, they are so good. I'm still, so in terms of truck mount, I still prefer this design over the Curse of the Beast version. And here it is the truck mount alongside the AMX Side Star Commander. Again, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Hasbro did an amazing job improving the SS Story mode into this mold. It's a heavy retool, but in terms of everything, this guy is in terms of transformation, at least, I prefer this guy over this guy. But of course, this is where SS38 truck mode kind of gets to delete. The back is super clean, and unlike this over here, because they ran a budget on this guy. But overall, in terms of overall figure, I still prefer SS102 over the SS38. It's just so good. It's just so good transformation. It's nice. The robot mode is super clean. And yeah, in terms of retool, this is an amazing retool. And I do still prefer this guy over this guy. So, some final thoughts on the Black Mamba OP01 Knockout Studio Series 102 Optimus Prime. Overall, I am incredibly impressed by this. Even though this is a knockout, again, like I've said multiple times already, this is Hasbro engineering and mold and design. I gotta give credit what's credit to you. Hasbro did an amazing job on making this figure. Uh, it, 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 I have zero complaints apart from the trigger happy shoulders and some and some stiff joints that I have been men I have mentioned previously and of course the cannon and the lack of accessories I have zero complaints about this guy all of the complaints that I mentioned earlier were just nitpicks in terms of everything this is amazing it is the perfect figure the absolutely 10 out of 10 figure in my collection as of right now and in my opinion this is the best studio series mold ever in my opinion this is just the best in terms of Posability in terms of details, it is superb. I absolutely love this guy. If you can pick up the original figure for retail prices, I would highly recommend you to get the original figure because because it is going to be more, more worth it. There's going to be no QC issues, low risk of QC issues if, if you bought if you instead of bought the real one instead of the knockoff. But if you have missed out on the original figure and you don't want to wait, Masbro releasing the mass retail version of this guy. Then you can pick up this guy, or you can pick up the MHZ Toys Supreme Commander, which is their oversized Studio Series 102 Optimus Prime, which is currently out right now, and I and I have seen Prime vs Prime review it already, which I will leave a link in the description down below for his review of the MHZ Toys. But if you just want to get the same scale uh, as the original figure, this is the perfect one. This is the, the this is the one that you need to get if you want the perfect figure, and if you didn't mind the lack of accessories that the Supreme Commander has. Overall, in terms of in terms of Doei, as a bootleg, this is a good bootleg. This is a good knockoff of that of that original SS 102, and I would highly recommend for you to pick up this guy if you don't want if you missed out on the original uh, Buzzworthy Bumblebee release, or you don't want to wait the mass retail release. And if you don't want to, if you want to get the one-to-one -one scale of that Studio Series 102, this is the one. This is the perfect figure for you. And in terms, everything is nice. You have some die cut pieces, nice, nice quality plastic, tight joints and stiff joints, no loose bits whatsoever. This is the perfect figure. In my opinion, in my entire collection, this is the 10 out of 10 figure. So with that in mind, thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you find this useful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.